Humans are the only animals that can turn great imagination into reality. And that ability lives in all of us. As a physician and inventor, I've learned firsthand the benefit of living a concept called you will see it when you believe it. This powerful concept will enable us to move towards our goals and change the world around us for the better. Leonardo da Vinci envisioned, among many things, the air screw, which gave rise to the helicopter. Martin Luther King envisioned a world free of prejudice and gave birth to a powerful movement. You will see it when you believe it is a concept that we can all apply to our daily lives to shape our environment or ourselves in the direction that we want to see. And I'd like to share with you some personal examples. Growing up uh, as a kid, uh, I, I, I remember when I first saw a radio and I thought they were, that this was when I was very young, and I thought there were little people in there <laughs> singing and talking. So I found a paper box, crawled into it, and had hours of fun pretending to be a radio. <laughs> I believed it. Uh, I, I saw it, and I believed it. Now, while practicing as an anesthesiologist in the 1980s, I had many elderly patients who were about to undergo major surgery and they would bank a unit of their own blood every week for up to six weeks just prior to surgery so as to avoid receiving other people's blood and trans potential transfusion reactions, disease transmission and so on. However, removing over a gallon of blood over a six week period in these elderly patients rendered them weak and oftentimes dizzy. And not only that, by the time of surgery, all the clotting factors had dissipated. So I devised an alternative. Immediately after putting them under anesthesia, I would withdraw a pre-calculated amount of blood. And at the same time, through another IV, I would re replenish and re-expand the vascular volume. And as the blood loss began to mount during surgery, I would give back to them the blood, their own blood that I had removed just hours earlier without any risk of transfusion reaction, disease transmission, or loss of clotting factors. Now, many patients are uh, debilitated by pain right after surgery. And being bedridden increases the risk of clots, blood clots, and uh, lung complications. So I wanted to block the pain impulses from traveling up to their brain. And so I inserted an epidural catheter in a space that's just outside the spinal column, and I would deliver small doses of narcotics. And the narcotic bind to special receptors and selectively block pain impulses from traveling to their brain without affecting their muscles. So my patients were able to move about completely pain-free on the day of surgery, I mean, after, right after surgery. In, in 2005, um, I had a, a, a neighbor of mine who had a non-healing wound after surgery. And one day he excitedly called me to tell me that he's going to have the world's most advanced wound healing system put on him. And he invited me to go and watch. Uh, and up until that time, I hadn't given a thought to the challenges of wound healing. Now, in the United States, we spend over $50 billion a year just to treat 6.5 million chronic wounds. That is 10 times the budget of the World Health Organization. And the reason chronic wounds take such a horrifically long time to heal is that they suffer from not having enough blood, flow and not enough oxygen to enable them to move on to the road to healing, cell division, um, and uh, all the other uh, things, collagen synthesis and so on, necessary for wound healing. And this is usually due to underlying chronic diseases such as diabetes and kidney failure. So I was very eager to see what this leading edge device is all about. 
and it entailed trimming a uh, foam dressing to the exact geometry of the wound bed, uh, and then covering that foam gauze, foam dressing, with an adhesive drape, and then connecting the system to a pump. And in the process, a waste fluid called exudate, which may comprise of um, uh, pus, uh, bacteria, dead cells, and serum, is removed from the wound bed, and the blood flow is increased by up to 40%. However, during this therapy, the granulation tissue is sucked into the honeycomb of the foam guard. And because this dressing has to be changed every other day, in the process then, at least a portion of the, of the granulation tissue is torn off with each dressing change. Now, we've all experienced the pain from peeling off a scab from a little wound. Now, just imagine the pain from peeling off a scab that had been sucked into the dressing every other day for six months on average. Many wounds take more than a year to heal. So the suffering is enormous. So I decided that I'm going to invent a radical wound care system that doesn't need any dressings, and it would create an optimized microenvironment to accelerate wound healing. I dreamed and thought about this system day and night for months, and then year after year, for 11 years. And I wanted to uh, protect the wound with a clear cover, but as you know, skin surfaces are not even, and I wanted to create a leak-proof system so I can deliver all kinds of fluids and gases into it. So how could I do that? Well, I ended up creating this wound chamber, and it comes in different shapes and sizes, but it has an openable lid, and you can see on top of the lid there were multiple ports through which we can deliver all kinds of therapies to it. And underneath is a soft, inflatable cushion that can be adjusted to different uh, topography. I worked on this system for a very long time, and I kept uh, thinking about ways that I can improve it, and uh, by living, breathing, dreaming, and thinking about this, um, after more than a decade, I've now created this one-of-a-kind wound care system that delivers a unique form of therapy that increases blood flow 400% instead of just 40%. And it provides surges, pulses of pressurized oxygen. Think of it as like kind of giving CPR to the wound bed and rescuing them from the verge of death. And it, is, uh, it provides a therapeutic platform that delivers all kinds of therapies as never before possible. This award-winning, patented, advanced wound care system is called OASIS and will become available next year. Among the beneficiaries, first beneficiaries of this system will be our wounded soldiers. Thank you. Now, no matter what your background is, you can apply the same concept to uh, your place of work, your home, your whatever environment you're in to make it better. Um, I love tropical fruits, and I wanted to be able to grow lots of them, but I only have a modest-sized garden. So I started out with a mango tree. Uh, this is a lemon flavor, numbed out my tree, and then I read about how to graft and so on. And I then grafted uh, mid, early, and late season cultivars. So this one same tree, and now I can enjoy mango six months a year instead of just one. <laughs> uh, now this is the same tree, okay? You're gonna see, you see all these different types of mangoes at different stages of development is on one tree. But by extending this concept to all the other fruit trees in my garden, I have over 60 cultivars of tropical fruits, and I can enjoy fresh harvest almost year-round. So, as you can see from these examples, that the possibilities by which you can improve the world around you is virtually limitless. And as long as you believe in your ability to improve yourself a little bit more each day, there's no telling what you can do. I was born in Taiwan uh, to a family of very limited financial means. Growing up, 
I had no toys other than what I could find in the ditch. But with my imagination, I was able to be very happy. And at age eight, my family moved to the island of Borneo in Southeast Asia. And the US Navy ship came to town. And they invited the local boys and girls to come on board to have ice cream and watch cartoon. Isn't it wonderful American hospitality and goodwill? <laughs> So there I met a sailor and he told me about America, which became to me the symbol of freedom and opportunity. And I dreamed about coming to study in America. At age 16, I ran into a Peace Corps member from New York City and he said to me, if you want to go to America, just write to my mayor, John Lindsay. He's a good man and he'll help you. And so I did. I could see it, I believed it, and I took action to make that come true. Along the way, I encountered many surprises, uh, transient setbacks, uh, but I kept the faith and took these uh, challenges as ways to train and improve myself. So the bottom line is, if we all can embrace this belief that we can change the world for the better, even if in little ways, and maybe in very big ways. And if we can inspire other people to join us in making this change, in practicing this concept, then there's a great deal that we can be optimistic and hopeful about. Martin Luther King had a dream. We all can have a dream and make it come true. You will see it when you believe it. Thank you.